Let's imagine that we got some code like here on the left where we have a button or link component. And this button or link component can either take in, basically can either act as an anchor or it can act as a button. And so you might think, okay, the props for this button or link component, we can either make them the button props or the anchor props. But if I turn on TypeScript here, it's gonna give us a massive error here, a huge error. And the error is inside the component. What we're doing inside the component is we're checking if there's a href on the props, because that indicates that it's an anchor. And if there is a href on the props, then we return the anchor there. Fantastic, passing all the props in. But on the button, it turns out that we've not properly disambiguated that union. We've not properly said this is a this is an anchor inside this first little like closure here. So how is that possible? Well, the user doesn't have to pass in a href when it's an anchor, right? So just by checking if there's a href in the props, we still don't know yet whether props is a button or link. It hasn't like um, sort of narrowed down to the right member. So we can change this by actually making the anchor uh, or rather the href in the anchor required. So we say react.anchorHTML elements, HTML anchor elements, and href is a string. So we've now made it required, and now inside the component it's actually happy. We check if href is on the props. If it is, then we say, okay, the anchor props with required href. That's the, I don't know why I say href, but I do. I'm gonna keep saying href because that's what my brain wants to do. Then down here we have react.buttonHTML elements, HTML button elements. So the narrowing is, Good, but actually when we go to use it, we can see that the button or link component, whenever we use like an on click handler here, it says parameter E implicitly has an any type. That's because it's a bit harder or TypeScript isn't quite smart enough to disambiguate the two when we pass in the ref there. So what we do is we go to an as prop and we say, okay, we have our button or link props here where we say react.buttonHTML elements, HTML attributes, button HTML elements, and we add an as to basically each member of the union to properly like distinguish them. And this is what's called a discriminated union, right? We're creating a discriminated union out of this by saying on this branch, when you pass as button, it's gonna be a button. But when you say, okay, on this branch, it's gonna be as a instead. And now this works beautifully. If we change our logic inside here, you can see that we get on this branch react anchor HTML attributes and on this branch we get button HTML attributes. This means too that when we pass them down here that the on click is correctly inferred. So this on click is a react mouse event HTML anchor element because we're passing in the anchor and then up here this one is react mouse event HTML button element. Fantastic, all working beautifully. Except, of course, we can no, there's no longer any default behavior on our component. So our component like, has to be passed in an as here. And for this, what we can do is we can just add in an optional like uh, member or make this property of as optional on the one that we want to be the default. And now when we go to use it, it still works, except that it just defaults to be a button. So there we go. This enormous great big interface here is I think the best solution when you want to create a very simple polymorphic component. When you want to create a, like a mega polymorphic component that can accept any component or anything like that, first of all, rethink your life choices. See if you actually want to do this instead, because this can take in you know as many members as you want it to. Uh, and also maybe just refactor it out to be different components, you know, that's also a possibility. But if you need to do it, this is the way.